Are relationships important? We have one life to live, one body, and one planet. Relationships are the most significant factor impacting and influencing every aspect of our lives, personally, professionally, and in caring for the planet. Like air and water, good or bad, relationships cannot be avoided, and we would not survive without them. Every relationship begins with a connection. I think we can all agree on that. We believe that mastering connection with relationship rhythms is the next evolution in our human story and our life legacy. Whether emotional, physical, intellectual, or spiritual, we are in many relationships and connected to someone or something from the time we wake up in the morning. Think about your day today. Like millions on the planet, did you wake to a jarring alarm? Dogs, cats, kids jumping on your bed? Did you check the news, check your phone, choose your wardrobe, have breakfast? All before you flew out the door into your car or public transportation to where you are now. Whether we know all the people around us or not, we are all connected as humanity first. And that's where the bottom line begins. Corporations know this. Corporations spend $67 billion annually on customer relationship management systems. Think about your favorite song, movie, play, or book, and how you connect to them with your heart. All written about relationships. Global borders, the environment, technology, human rights, all shared and fought over because of relationships. Now, while not a disease, sometimes, from time to time, relationships have been known to make us sick, angry, sad, frustrated. Can you relate? Are you currently in a relationship? I see some yeses, I see some noes. I hope you would say yes. <laughs> Did you immediately think about a romantic relationship when I asked the question? That's not surprising. Who would you say your most important relationship is with? Your partner, your spouse, your kids, your friends, your siblings, your work, your community? You know, we're talking about all of these relationships. But the most significant relationship of all, for each of us, 24-7, and while we sleep, is with ourselves. We come to our relationships today from a long legacy of relationships from our past, our parents' past, and their parents way before them, who each paved the way for who we are today and who also shaped much of what we believe to be true about relationships with family, with friends, with our culture, with our community, with our faith, with political issues, with social issues, and with time and money. When you think about that, and you look at the choices that we make, it all comes from a legacy, because we are their living legacy. We also choose relationships in our lives, from our youth into our adulthood. We're husband and wife, if you haven't figured that out by now, and we've been living, loving, working, and playing together, side by side, choosing each other every day for nearly the past 20 years. That's being in a very connected relationship. So the choices we make along the way and how we operate in it says everything about who we are in our business and in our personal lives. What's interesting is that whenever we're together, people inevitably say to us, OK, you guys have this magical thing going on. How does it work to actually work together as a couple without making each other crazy? OK, on some days we make each other crazy. I just got to be honest about that. And also still having a you know, personal life. On some days, that's not so easy. But it's also something that we continue to work on on a continuous basis. 
right? So when you think about how that works in your life, it's extremely important when we look at how we operate across all of these spaces. What's interesting is that we've always known that there's been this powerful connection between us, but we never quite understood it. It was this synchronicity, this rhythm that really worked. And in truth, I was afraid to analyze it. I thought if we analyzed it, we might break it. But we did get curious, and we felt like we wanted to explore how all the work we were doing to bring success to our clients and to thrive in our personal lives, how that really affected other people. Are they all in their relationships that are thriving, operating with some of these commonalities? And what might they have been? So we launched an expedition of discovery. While Maris and I were working together globally as executive producers, business consultants, coaches, authors, and mentors, and working with celebrities, heads of state, heads of household, from classrooms to boardrooms, we began to notice a clear distinction between being in relationship to and being in relationship with someone or something. Being in relationship to can be one-sided, has nowhere to go, and limited connection. Being in relationship with offers an exchange of connection, belonging, and possibilities that can benefit us at work and at home. All these relationships guide us. We also notice that relationships have a beat, a tempo, a rhythm. Now, as a singer-songwriter since my teens, I understand the power of rhythm. Sometimes our relationships can be smooth like cool jazz or driving like rock, rap, or country, all with varied beats and tempos that impact our connections. In our daily lives, sometimes our relationships experience all of these rhythms. Abraham Maslow, you may know Abraham Maslow, one of the most cited psychologists of the 20th century, stated, he wrote about the hierarchy of needs. He stated that after the physiological and safety needs have been met, there's a third level to human need. It's belonging, belongingness. That human emotional need for interpersonal relationships. You remember the movie Castaway? The character played by Tom Hanks was stranded on an island, completely alone, cut off from the world. And yet, he was connected with himself and he was connected with his surroundings. And after he had satisfied the big five of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, water, food, shelter, safety, and rest, he turned to the third level, belongingness. And he created a relationship with a volleyball. We all remember that fateful moment when we hear him yelling, Wilson! We began to notice in our discovery as we, as we kept working on this, we began to notice four connected relationships rhythms. Respect, responsibility, reframing, and resilience. When these rhythms are working in unison in our relationships, they create the relationship rhythm circle. You know, relationships may actually be the unsung determiner of success and the predictor of healthy living. A Carnegie Mellon University study actually showcased that social support and belonging can reduce stress and heart disease and improve quality of life. The relationship rhythm circle respect, responsibility, reframing, and resilience is the lifeblood of mastering connection in every aspect of our lives. In our work daily, we see individuals seeking relationships for love, corporations, not-for-profits, cities, countries, states, and governments, all in desperate need of reshaping their mindset around the importance of relationships. Is it a time that relationships move front and center on the world stage, the global stage that we call life? Over the next few minutes, we're going to actually talk through these rhythms, and we invite you to look at these rhythms from a lens into your own life. 
The first of the relationship rhythms is respect. In the rhythm of respect, we show up, we're present, we listen, we build trust, and we lead with compassion and authenticity. When we bring respect, our relationships are empowered. In the 18th century, philosopher Immanuel Kant wrote that all people are owed equal respect, irrespective of achievements, abilities, or qualities, based on our human need, our human humanity. The truth is, no matter where we're born or the culture we grow up in, respect is a birthright. The next rhythm in the relationship rhythm circle is responsibility. In the rhythm of responsibility, we are intentional. We're committed. We're impeccable with our words and accountable for our actions. Let me ask you guys a question. Who's responsible for the care and feeding of our planet? The care and feeding of our personal relationships and our professional relationships. Is it the other person's or is it mine? Years ago, early in my career, I worked with the iconic chef Julia Child. Some of you may remember her. One morning at breakfast, she asked me about a meaningful relationship I was in at the time. Her question changed my future. She asked me, in that amazing voice of hers, for as much as you travel, when you're away from home and you wake up in the morning, is he your first thought? My immediate response stunned even me as no came out of my mouth. She looked at me in that incredible, unmistakable voice, and she said, get rid of him. <laughs> I, I, I was stunned that someone I barely knew sitting across from me was completely in tune to a relationship that I was hanging on to for dear life. This relationship had lost its significance, had lost its connection. So I could either stand as a victim to it or step into my responsibility and be committed to understanding why it was out of sync and how I was showing up in it. When Go, go ahead, sorry. No. No, no. Out of sync, how's that working? Out of sync. Out of sync. You got yeah, it? Good. Okay, okay, that's good. good. Here We're we go. Now. The third relationship rhythm is reframing. In the rhythm of reframing, when we lead with gratitude, we accept and meet people where they are, we honor their feedback as neutral, a new perspective emerges. When we reframe, a shift can happen. Years ago, I had a powerful conversation with Apollo 17 astronaut, Captain Eugene Cernan. He was the last man to walk on the moon. He shared with me that from his vantage point, the surface of the moon, looking back at the Earth, 250,000 miles away, he saw no differences between people. He saw a world without borders. His reframing changed everything, and it helped us to recognize that we are all connected as humans on this big blue marble, this planet, our home. The last rhythm in the relationship rhythm circle is resilience. Can you guys think back to a moment of when you were resilient? Yeah, just think about that. We all experience in our lives trauma, drama, and challenges. We are certainly not any exception to that rule. Issues, professional issues, all kinds of things that we've had to deal with that have just come into our lives. In the rhythm of resilience, when we stand up and step forward to courageously face and navigate inevitable change, our relationships are inspired and renewed. That changes everything. That's a choice that we make. When we look at a commitment to the four rhythms, 
respect, responsibility, reframing, and resilience. When we are in sync and our head and heart are connected, our lives are soaring. Our business and our working relationships are soaring. Ah, but when we're offbeat, off rhythm, mayhem, right? Think of business deals gone bad, a relationship that might have gone sour, an argument you may have had with someone at work, someone at home, a health scare. When we think about where to begin mastering these connections in our lives, of course, it's with ourselves first. It's an inside out job. So we invite you to take a look at your relationships. Ask yourself, am I living in relationship to, or am I living in relationship with my life and those in it? Am I living in sync using these four relationship rhythms, respect, responsibility, reframing, and resilience? Our choices determine our future. In truth, recognizing our connection with everyone and every living part of the planet is at a tipping point. We have one life to live, one body, and one planet. Mastering the connection with the rhythms is our next evolution in our human story and our life legacy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.